Hey guys, welcome back to Little Alchemist Helper. It's me, Mr. Andersam. I'm going to do something I haven't covered in a really long time, and that is the optimizer. I'm going to release with this video the 1.13 version of the tool. No, there are no new cards or combos added, but we went ahead and fixed a problem that was uh, lying dormant there for years. Um, so that's fixed as well as I worked with a member of the Discord and that goes by uh, Reneha to create some mm, additional features. So there's gonna be two files for you to download. There's going to be a uh, version 113 and 113A. The A is going to have some extra code behind it, so it will warn you about security things and that you shouldn't necessarily trust the things that you've downloaded from the internet. But I promise it's I've reviewed the code myself. There's nothing that is in it other than the what it's going to do. Um, and I can go through that. But because of that, you will have to click this enable content button for the tool to work. So if you don't want to use this, just download the regular tool with the same old link. There'll be another one in the description of this video, but same link everywhere you found it before should redirect you to the new version that I fixed the glitch. If you want to try out these new buttons that got added, um, there will be a new link and I'll probably go update all of the places that I think point to this. So um, just so you guys know, I went ahead and added my library over here. So these are all of my cards where they are at now. And actually I don't, shoot. Um, it's not perfect because my quantities for my silver and bronze cards need to be adjusted for how many onyx cards I have because otherwise we will run into a problem because right now as it stands now I have like werewolf onyx down here and three werewolves here it will potentially put four of them in my deck so we'll just have to keep an eye out for that. That's just kind of a general thing to keep track of. I do have another copy where I've corrected all of that. So it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily do that, but that's something that we will need to keep an eye out for. And I just wanted to warn you guys about. So we have five brand new buttons. Uh, clear deck, which I mean, if you just start putting random stuff in here and you decide that you don't want it, you can clear the deck. Works better if it's a solid wall of cards. Um, you can quick fill the deck. So what this is recommended for is if you know that you want to, for say, just take one of each of the gold combo cards. Those are all listed there. I have them all fused start with that um, you have to have at least one card but it works with more than that you can click fill the deck and it will think for a little bit and just like that you now have a full list of cards added as it went down and added them now as you can see it, it didn't do it perfectly um, it's just going down one line at a time and adding the best card at that time. Now, the other thing that it does is it locks your advanced controls. So if you know what you want, I would highly recommend that you go in here and update these values. For me, I think that the fusion buff in the tool is too strong. That's mostly because I leave my unfused cards at level four. So they basically take a double nerf so I have to lower that down right here, this fusion buff. I usually lower that down to 150. So I'm getting really um, careless about how many unfused cards I have. I'll take it down to like 125. Um, I have 
a ton of strong cards. So I usually put this, I mean, 57 is close. I'm going to go all the way up to 59, and I will leave that at 2. So back on the main page. Now, we get a score. If you have your overrides, you can set a, you can use that the score to compare decks. So now that I have a very quick filled deck, I'm going to copy this to the leaderboard and it will do two things. One, it will make a new tab since I don't have anything here. And then it will put this deck here sorted for me alphabetically. Um, tell me how many cards are in the deck. It will give me a global score. Now, what you can use this for is to compare decks that have different settings. So you and your friend are both making decks. You can use the global score to compare them. The only thing that you have to keep track of is that they have the same number of cards. So that's 62,000. If I go to advanced controls, I say that I want 35 combo cards. And I go back here and I just quick fill the last five cards. And I copy this deck to the leaderboard. It's not necessarily stronger, but because there's more cards to work with, the global score will be way, way higher. I mean, and so will its, its own score. So keep that in mind. If you are comparing decks against your friends or against your own different setups, the more cards you have, the higher the score is going to be. It's We talked about doing a, a score per card. I don't think that's a good enough formula just to capture exactly how strong the deck is. Um, but I'm going to turn that back down to 30. I'm going to delete this. And because we can just rebuild the leaderboard whenever we want, I'll clear my deck out and we will move on with the video. Now, I started with a card in there. If I literally wanted to let the tools try every single one of these, I'm not going to do this on the video, every single one of these library cards, that's what this try all cards with quick fill button does. It takes each of your cards in your library, it sets it as a starting point, and it quick fills the decks. And as it goes, it copies them all to the leaderboard. It's a wonderful tool. Um, it gives you a really good sense of what some good starting points are going to be. But ultimately, it's, it's not what I think the coolest feature of this is. The coolest feature, in my personal opinion, is this advanced fill deck. You can run it with nothing, you can give it some starting points, but it will override as it goes. So, for me, <clears throat> I know I'm going to go ahead and use Superhero Onyx no matter what. So I'm just going to plop that right in there. And then I'm going to click Advanced Fill Deck. Now I already have my advanced controls locked, so they're not going to change. So I can start doing things like comparing scores as I go. So I'll click this, and what it's going to do is it's going to go back at the end of each round and weed out any of the weaker cards. So as you saw when I did the quick fill, it kind of left a lot of holes. Um, this this gray wall here, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but this gray wall that's constantly shifting around um, was really broken up, which is kind of an indication of not a very well put together deck. You kind of just want all of these suggested cards. Maybe you have a suggestion floating around in there uh, that you don't have in your deck, but you want them all together. And then all of the not suggested cards with a lower score than the cards that you have suggested. So this one takes some time. Um, it's pretty processor intensive. I, to be fully honest, I'm hoping that this renders well and that it, it video captures well. I, I honestly don't know. Um, but as you can see, it's uh, slowly ticking up this score. It should pretty much exclusively go I mean, it'll go up and down, but
but it should pretty much just exclusively go higher and higher as it starts to weed out the cards. And I ended up with a score of about 32,000. So I will copy this to the leaderboard. And you'll see my global score is actually much higher than that. It, if you have mostly lower level cards, um, or not very many gold combo cards and onyx combo cards, your score will be probably higher than the global score. If you have a end game deck with plenty of onyx cards to use, you will end up with a score that is substantially lower than the global score. That's kind of why we created this is because score itself is, is not a very good indication of how strong the deck is. And I know that doesn't sound very um, inherently true, but if you want to compare decks, please use global score, not score. And to see that, just copy it to the leaderboard. It'll be there. So I started with Superhero Onyx. As you can see, it kept it in the deck, but it doesn't necessarily do that every time. I mean, just to show you that, I can clear the deck I will start with, um, let's just start with like a regular bronze demon and we will advanced fill the deck. I hope that this is like actually updating on the screen. I don't, I don't, I don't know how well my computer is going to actually handle doing all this. I'm recording on the same computer that I'm running this on. Hopefully it's not choppy and doesn't make my audio sound terrible. But we'll see. I mean, it, it's it's rolling through this. Uh, we've got my score over here ticking up. And hopefully you guys can see the screen updates. Occasionally Excel will decide that it's going to do what it wants to do. And it won't actually show you the, the screen updates. So it'll just kind of give you a blue circle for a really long time. It's working, it's not stuck. Um, the If you are afraid it's locked up, uh, you can hit Control C, just like copy inside a Visual Basic, that's cancel. So it will stop your active running script uh, if you're worried about it. But we do have loop canceling in the script. Um, spoke with Mr. Neha on this, we, we went through uh, like five or six rounds back and forth testing. We, we found that it was pretty solid. I, I couldn't break it. Even had TapDog take a quick peek at it before I made the video. Now, I ended up with uh, 32,327. So we will copy this to the leaderboard. And as you can see, it's exactly the same deck because that advanced deck feature it's it's basically built to just it, it will take into consideration the overrides so by all means if you don't know what your overrides should be set to i run a quick fill once it will lock your overrides in place at an approximate level of where they need to be to optimize for your deck and then you can use this advanced fill after you clear it out and we did quite a bit of testing on this, and I think I found one instance where it actually created a different deck. Um, oh no. Oh. So then the last, the last part of this is, let's say I'm looking at this, like okay this is a really good starting point but i really i really just don't i don't like metal onyx i i think it's i think it's the worst um and i don't like tree onyx if if for whatever reason after i deleted those out it suggested something different you could then just use quick fill and it should put them right back in um, but because it does want metal and tree, it just, it puts them right back. Um, you can also do things like, I don't like this chunk of cards. And for this, I want to focus 
on I, I just want a bunch of attack based cards in here now i need to adjust the settings in order to do this so you have to have a pretty strong grasp of what what these advanced controls do and i do have other videos that go more in depth on what they do but you can go back here and just do quick fill and it'll just put them all right back in you know you're like oh man now now holy water is is terrible but remember that's because we put this to attack so if we go back to sum and we go back to 59 and 2 like i had it before you'll see it's it's all over the place but no no these that now score low it's because those are your attack cards and so if you want a hybrid deck where some of the cards are only there for attack purposes you can kind of break it up that way so you want to click alpha to highest version copy it to the leaderboard see it it does get a slightly lower global score um, i can even show you that if you mess with the advanced controls if we leave this in attack mode 30 like this is gonna have a crazy low score because it's all driven by that um it's all driven by the, the advanced controls exact same deck 10,000 lower score your global score is still identical so that's what that does. That's how all of that works. Um, leave any questions or comments down below. Uh, I love to hear this feedback on you. I know, I know we haven't done a, an update to this tool in quite some time, but I was really excited when, uh, when, when approached about actually putting some of these auto buttons in, into the optimizer. And I, Pretty sure that was also Tap Dog's idea. So now I'm running two videos in a row that were just Tap Dog's idea. Maybe I should leave him as the idea man. That, that works out well. But anyway, I've been talking long enough. So I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks for sticking with me. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.